Welcome back, Acron fans, to another cast exhibition match. This time we're going to be on Kratoria, another map that we haven't seen in a while, but definitely more often than we've seen Bluffs of Ananzi. So let's get started with Cron Aberrant versus Ferreter once again. I mean, Dave Cron versus Ferreter because they've been playing, apparently. So yeah. Also, I just want to point out, I don't know what happened, but this map suddenly looks a lot prettier. I, I don't know why, but something... I don't know if I changed something or if it's something in the map, but yeah, it, it just, it looks prettier. It's reflecting in the light more interestingly. Never noticed that before. Anyway, I digress. So, Kratoria's map, we have seen a fair amount, though. We, so it's just 2v2 map, northeast versus southwest, with not a whole lot of resource crates in any particular position, and a lot of the resource crates being protected by this comm center right here, and over here in the northwest as well, and a bunch of other ones being used, well, with teleporters around them, as well as neutral chronoporters. So this is definitely a map with a lot of neutral units. Chronoporter does enjoy neutral units in his maps. He's certainly pushed them in his own stuff, but this is also a decently large map that actually feels large. I think because the fact that the resources are quite sparse and there's a lot of ways to move around, a lot of little paths throughout the map, has a tendency to produce games that last a while and involve base trades and involve players ending up not sure where each other is, because there's so many places you can build, so many places you can move, and it gets rather interesting that way. Though it does require some good eyes and good scouting going on. And it looks like right now Kramer is starting with a very powerful scout, sending his Akron as well as two of his infantry forward to see what Ferret is up to, while Ferret, on the other hand, only sending out his Akron. Sending it into Kramer's base and of course, this chat mission is actually kind of amusing. It doesn't feel the difference it makes, except, you know, the next game. Because this actually happened before the Bluffs of Ananzi game that I just cast last. Ferreter actually ended up losing partly because he lost his Akron and couldn't command anything in the playable past. Because, yes, the Assassin mode, the way it works is that each player has a starting Akron, which is a defenseless unit, no attacks, just 700 health, and a fairly moderate move speed. If the Akron, the Akron basically represents them. If it dies, their screen blanks out and just says that they can't command anything, they can't see anything at this time. No signal from Temporal Transceiver is basically what it says. And they can't do anything. Now, of course, being that we're just on a replay, I don't have it do that. Instead, in, if the player is looking at a point in time where their Akron is dead, their orders, the Chrono Energy and order things will say Akron dead. Like it does right there. Perfect timing. So yeah, if it says this, it means that the player is looking at a point in time where their Akron is dead and this cannot command anything. So we switch over to Kramer's point of view. Ferreter is still up when he actually can't do this, but... Ferreter has actually now jumped back, so he is in a position where he can still have orders. And really, moving forward like that with your Akron is pretty typical. Most players will scout out with the Akron like that and then jump back in time and undo the scout completely. Though it looks like Ferret is actually playing this rather risky and not moving his Akron back that quickly. Not sure why, but yet, yeah, it's very common for players to scout their Akron because it really doesn't do anything else other than provide vision and a bit of a meat shield, but you don't want it to die, so it's not a particularly effective meat shield. So it's... And of course the players are now discussing balance while building up their economy, getting their resource processors up, Kronheimer is once again focused very heavily on his importer, though unlike Bluffs of Ananzi, this map is... Well, it's linear enough. There's a small enough rush distance that it's not a terrible idea to have an early importer to get a bit of early infantry, just because your opponent might actually viably rush you. And once again, we see Ferreter losing his Akron, though not from his point of view. So Ferreter should be fine. Like I said, he probably will be moving that back, just jumping back once again, and... As you can see, yes, his, his Akron is staying in the base, so he has uh, he has echoed out the scouting. Kron Aberrant simply retreating, leading out a couple Octos from the base. I I think Ferret is probably wise on that, but I don't know. He might be letting them go. I hope not for his own sake, because that's that's not a DLC that he's planning on using for resource processors. And if that gets baited out of the base, that's going to be a bit of a blow for his economy. He's going to lose two RPs earlier on. Probably not a huge blow, though. He probably will figure it out. But... No, he's actually going. He's chasing that Akron. I'm... I guess I can see why, because you'd want to get at it, but the Octos move just as fast as the Akron does. They're probably not going to be able to catch up with it. 
unless Cron Aberrin gets lazy and does not doesn't keep moving, but it looks like he is going to keep moving, and, oh, just about, the Octa, one of the Octas is about to catch up with that Acron, and Cronenberg, having not echoed this out, he's actually not in a position to be able to echo it out, this is all he can do is retreat, but moving some infantry in to take care of the Octos, and the Octos getting distracted by the infantry, killing off the special loss, but the Marine also going down, however, the Acron has successfully gotten away, so Cronenberg has succeeded in what he was planning on doing initially, and gotten his Acron successfully escaped from Ferreter's base, so Ferreter... Losing one of his Octos, one of the Octos he used to build his RPs from the looks of it, though it looks like he's managed to build additional RPs in order to pick up the slack there. Not the biggest deal overall, but Cron Aberrant... No, never mind. He's simply undone that. The Octos are not moving forward. One of them is, but one of them managed to build his RP. And it will be going down shortly, so Ferreter really should go back and stop that from happening. And I imagine he probably will, and it looks like he actually did. So, he has no Octos ultimately chasing that Acron, and that's good because there was really no way they'd be able to catch up to it. There's no way they'd be able to catch up to it and kill it, it's... Even without the infantry there. Though, it's important to note that these infantry are over here. Cronamron could use them to build a proxy base if he wanted to. And if he does, that could be very powerful because I don't think Ferret's gonna be looking over here or over here for a proxy base. Maybe over here, because he might actually see it if he's going for the expansion. But over here is it's typically a powerful position. Or down here, actually. This section right here is also a powerful position for a proxy. And there's the first reef that Ferreter has built up. Now, Cronenberg, on the other hand, main base getting a second importer. And he is building up a lot of infantry as he normally does. Ferreter not going for any sort of rush strategy, however. Cronenberg is just building up some infantry, I guess, for the sake of having them. Also, double checking the scouting, seeing the reef, seeing the additional RPs, and seeing no Octas around. So, knowing that Ferreter is basically defenseless. Though Ferreter is getting advanced structures, but Cronenberg does have a good timing. He's getting one factory, actually, he is going for the proxy in the slightly more visible position, but he is still going for it. And the Guardian Acron not seeing what's going on. Ferreter has no idea that this proxy is here. So, this could be very powerful. I think Cronenberg is probably going to go for a Lancer Rush from here. Or actually, no, he's not going to need a QPRP, so he probably going to go for ATC Rush then. Or no, he's moving his RPs to QP. It could very well be Lancers, because Lancers are definitely going to be quite powerful against these RPs that are close together. And there aren't a lot of air units being built, however, it wouldn't be too hard for Ferreter to build some Seppies, which would tear apart any Lancers that might come up. However, Ferreter having no idea what's going on, two or three Lancers could be built fairly quickly before it becomes an issue. And then from there, it's just a matter of Crown Aberrant winning. So Crown Aberrant, however, moving his infantry in from a position that does arouse suspicion, he's moving it from the north. And yes, Ferreter actually sees it coming from the north, coming from behind. I, he might figure out there's a proxy there. Certainly a bit suspicious that the infantry are coming from that particular direction at all. I mean, the fact that the infantry are there at all should arouse suspicion just because they can build. But the fact that they're coming specifically from the north rather than from the vehicle pathable ramps, that's where it becomes surprising, or just this area here. That's where it becomes surprising because why would the infantry be over the north unless they're building a proxy factory, building ATHCs? And the answer is, they probably wouldn't be. So Ferreter's likely to figure out something's up very shortly. And Cron Aberrant, on the other hand, not really building much in his base except for the infantry for patrolling. Getting his Acron out of the way, and apparently Ferreter loses his Acron over here about a minute and a half from now. But we'll see if he actually does. He's going to be building up an Octopod, which will get rid of the infantry very shortly. This Marine going to go down like two hits. No, the Marine actually getting itself in the way, so the Octopod not able to get through to shoot it. While the ATCs are up here just building up, one of them has been built, I don't think... Wait, I guess Cronenberg didn't build three ATCs, or he had three queued up, but he might have aborted one. Might have undone that. Building a factory as main base as well, just as a backup, not a bad idea. Might be building a mech from there to build a macrofab, though really, if you're gonna build a proxy macro or gonna build a macrofab, proxy is the way to go. Marine just barely escaping, the Octopod not chasing after it. So it won't see the proxy until another few ATCs come up. Actually, a couple Lancers wouldn't be a bad idea from here, but Crown Aberrant clearly getting quite a bit of Q-Plasma. I suspect he might actually be going for a Macrofab. It would not surprise me at this point. A couple ATCs coming out. Another factory being built up. Now I'm a bit confused. Like I said, a backup factory in his main base, probably what he's going for. Not a bad idea. But what he's planning on doing from there, I have no idea. Two factories in the proxy, also good. It's just both at once is a little bit confusing. Seems like a lot of money being put into that. But like I said, it's probably just backup. Probably he's suspecting that Ferreter will find the proxy and will try to destroy it and will succeed in destroying it. And thus, Q 
keeping the factory open as main base in the event that that happens. Not a terrible idea, but it is 70 LC that could go towards units that could, that's another couple ATHCs, basically, that could be built. But it looks like Crime Aberrant is not attacking for some reason. I have no idea why he's not attacking. I don't know what he's waiting for. His main base is producing one mech, which, like I said, probably will be producing a macrofab. Also getting an ATHC there, and other than that, not actually building a whole lot. He's not using this proxy as well as I would expect he would have, and he's otherwise not doing very much. Ferreter is definitely getting himself prepared for, well, looks like a counterattack overall. Oh, it looks like Crime commenting in the chat that he's... That Grekum isn't particularly good at proxying, which means he's not particularly experienced with it. I disagree. Grekum can be very powerful at proxying. There's there's some pretty scary proxies you can do. Both the Sephiroth Farapod proxy and also just having a base class proxy. It was a very powerful all-in rush. I think version 1.3, it might have been nerfed in 1.4. I think because the reef, the reef healing nerf kind of discouraged this. But doing an all-in proxy with Grekum wasn't exactly something unheard of. It was pretty common. So I disagree on that one, Cronhammer. There's there's definitely some power there. Regardless, Cronhammer's proxy ATCs have been discovered. He has built a couple more, but not really going beyond that. Now, of course, ATCs are detectors, or at least have been as of the last patch. So the Firepods aren't going to catch him by surprise, but it's still a thing to bear in mind. And Cronhammer does have machinery. Ferreter does have what well, we saw at the area, so advanced structures is obvious. And... Tanks are coming up as well, so Crown definitely now using his proxy more than he had before. And now I'm seeing more of the reasoning why he had a factory in his main base, because the factory in his main base does allow him to get some stronger defenders, so he doesn't have to worry so much about a counterattack like the one that's happening right now. However, I would still recommend at this exact moment going for, well, not this exact moment, where Crown is. Once these tanks are done, he's probably waiting for it to get very near the unplayable past edge and then just go for an all out attack. And. Is there... I hear upgrading noises. I don't see any turrets. I don't see any... Oh, upgrading noises from possibly technology. No, I do not... I heard upgrading. I do not see upgrading. I do see a Farapod, however, in the corner. Possible Sepipod coming in with a Leo class set up there to proxy in. And there's the Sepipod! So I expect Octopod proxy will be... Or Octoligo, I should say, proxy will be coming up shortly. And then from there, it's... It's going to be pretty powerful. Although, unfortunately, the Farbot has... Okay, went near, went near the Chrono Porter, but it probably didn't give itself away as a result. But yeah, the Octoligos are probably going to be coming up fairly shortly. There's the Sepipod, like I said. This is back at the 10-minute mark. Back to the 9-minute mark. This is probably where Chrono is waiting for and will likely be attacking now. Though, I'm still surprised I'm not seeing the attack. I do see the counterattack here. The Akron moving in foolishly into... Right into the line of fire. I don't know why Crimer is moving this thing back here. It's not like it's going to be dealing any damage. It's going to stay there and take damage. And that's the last thing he wants it to do. Nearly losing a Tornado to the Octopods and really having no way of healing it up. No Mammoth Bees or Blackbirds. So no way of healing that Tornado. And the Akron getting itself in harm's way. It's... Looks like he's going to die. It, I don't know why he did that. But there is, there's the attack. So he's actually going for the attack. I think he's going to try to kill off... Ferreter's Akron before he loses his own. That's pretty much his only hope at this point, having moved his Akron into a terribly foolish position. And yes, he is losing his Akron, or nearly losing his Akron in the unplayable past, just barely getting out of there. And trying to get this Ferreter's Akron down. Ferreter's Akron is half health, and Cronhammer's Akron is almost dead, but Ferreter. Ferreter has just about lost his. No, wait, I'm sorry. Cronhammer jumped back about half a minute just there, so we actually are seeing right as it was taking damage. But Cronhammer. Looks like he should be able to take this out. The ATCs are just getting in position, and Ferreter losing his Akron on the unplayable pass. Lose the Akron right here. Ferreter, however, does have chronoporting, and he might be able to chronoport back. It wouldn't be a paradox if he tried, so I expect he's going to be doing that, trying to get just buy himself a bit more time. But at this point, from Cronhammer's point of view, the Akron's dead, and the race to the base is pretty much open for picking. Or, or right for the picking. I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm a bit tired, so my turns of phrase are going to be a little bit stilted and bizarre. Regardless, Cronhammer has managed to escape with his Akron. Ferreter has not, and Ferreter really needs to avoid this red time wave. And it looks like he's not able to do so. Like I said, he still has Chrono He's not lost his base or anything. He's just lost the ability to command his forces. So as long as this time wave doesn't go across the entire timeline, 
but it looks like, no, he is actually losing his Akron, and the comedy made at the start about <laughs> the assassin mode not really having any effects, apparently that's, that's actually not true. <laughs> Found out in this game, apparently, that that is in fact not the case, that the Akron actually has meaning. So, very nice proxy attack there by Kron Aberrant, and that's the game, Fair to Surrenders. Hope you enjoyed that, everyone, and have a good night.